Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India My name is Imtiaz Ahmed Ansari and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Sociology, Jamia Mila Islami. Today, I am going to discuss with you what are the different stages of social movement. Now, uh, as we know that uh, any social movement emerges because of certain social disorder or there is some prevailing discontent uh, in the existing social order or, or the society is facing some kind of uh, problem some kind of uh, again uh, social movements are highly diverse diverse in terms of uh, some movements may be uh, micro in their orientation some may be macro oriented some movements may be of shorter duration where some some movements may last for longer period some movement may last for as long as a decade or even more than that some movements may adopt uh, some peaceful strategies to, uh, to achieve their goals, whereas some movements may be based on some more violent mechanisms in order to achieve their goals. Not only that, uh, because of the diversity of the nature in diversity in terms of the nature of the social movement, there has been no defined trajectory or there has been no defined uh, phases through which every social movement passes. So uh, there is a problem of uh, defining or identifying what are the different stages through which any social movement passes. So that has remained an important gap, an important problem in the study of social movement that there's been, there's been no uh, specific defined uh, stages or phases uh, through which any social movement passes. But uh, despite this gap, in identification of uh, the trajectory of social movement, some attempts have been made by different scholars uh, at different time periods to identify what are the phases or what are the different stages uh, in the life cycle of a uh, social movement. And uh, in this uh, context, I'm going to discuss the two important contributions uh, made by, the first is made by Herbert Bloomer. And uh, Herbert Bloomer has identified that there are there are four different stages in the life cycle of any social movement, which means that any social movement uh, right from the beginning of that movement till the till it comes to an end, uh, it passes through four different phases. And what are these four different phases? He calls them as uh, number one, social form, social ferment. Uh, second stage is that of popular excitement. Third is of formalization. And the fourth phase is of uh, institutionalization. Now, I'll, I'll try to explain uh, briefly what are these four different phases of a social movement. Uh, so the first stage is of uh, uh, what is called uh, social ferment. Now ferment uh, means uh, a kind of agitation and a kind of uh, ex excitement among a group of people. So uh, ferment is a state or uh, is a state or is a condition of uh, agitation or excitement and therefore social ferment indicates that society is in a state where it is moving very fast or where it is changing uh, very fast. So, uh, in the, so in the stage of social ferment, uh, agitators are uh, highly unfocused and unorganized regarding their goal and strategy. So they are not clear uh, what are the specific issues or what uh, kind of a strategy they should adopt in order to achieve the specific goal, which remains uh, unidentified. So in this stage, participants remain uh, directionless and it is a kind of more a kind of a, a propaganda which is used by the agitators to provide meaning and sense to their agitation than what they are agitating. But uh, more or less the wider population or at least the movement participants remain uh, unclear that what the problem is and what, what are the specific objectives of that social movement. So it is basically a stage of social ferment when there is some problem but uh, the agitators or the movement participants are still not very sure, not very clear what are their specific goals and strategies are going to be. Second stage is, is that of popular excitement. Now in this uh, stage, the cause of the problem due to which uh, discontent has emerged 
uh, has been identified and the objective of the movement has now become uh, clear to the members so uh, in the state once the stage of social movement passes from social ferment to popular excitement the cause of the problem has been identified and even the objective of collective action objective of movement has been clearly defined that what they are going to uh, achieve what should be their um, collective goal or objective which they want to achieve through that social movement third is the stage of uh, formalization now for uh, in formalization with now with the goal with the goals of uh, social movement defined uh, uh, the need for some kind of formal uh, structure is needed to coordinate the activities of the movement and coordination with strategies to achieve the goal so in the stage of formalization some kind of formal structure is created which basically coordinate the activities of uh, different members or the uh, or basically coordinate the uh, different kind of strategy which is going to be adopted by that particular uh, social movement or organization associated with that social movement so in this stage uh, participation and coordination of a strategy to achieve movement's goal become possible uh, the, the last stage of uh, social movement which has been identified by herbert bloomer is that of institu institutionalization now institutionalization means the process of becoming a permanent or a respected part of a society or an organization so uh, what was earlier uh, outside the system or non institutional has now become part of uh, the system or institutionalized now as you must be aware that uh, social movements are considered to be uh, basically a phenomenon of uh, phenomenon which is non institutional uh, in character basically they operate outside the established institutional uh, system institutional structure so but with the with the coming of uh, this uh, phase of this stage of institutionalization the movement becomes part of the society against which it was uh, protesting for some issues now in this stage it becomes difficult to identify the movement as separate from the wider mainstream society and in this stage the focus is more on to sustain the organization rather than the goals of the movement so in this stage basically uh, the movement becomes identified with the mainstream uh, society or against the system uh, or uh, it is identified with the system against which they were initially uh, protesting so institutional institutionalization basically means that the social movement and the social movement organization has now become part of the mainstream society and now it is no more uh, possible to differentiate the movement organization from the mainstream or from the wider society concerning uh, this stage last stage of institutionalization many people have questioned and criticized the applicability of this evolutionary model of social development and uh, they argue that adaptation is only one evolutionary possibility that it is not always necessary that a movement organization will uh, automatically become institutionalized and uh they will become a part of the same social order so uh, adaptation or moderation of an organization aim is is not the only possible development is not the only possibility uh, sometimes the movement organization uh, may disintegrate rather than uh, becoming identified or rather than to be identified with the uh, with the surrounding environment so uh, it is not always necessary that changes in the specific organizations uh, take place in the same direction so some movement organizations may become institutionalized whereas some movement organization become more radical and they and some may disintegrate over a period of time so institutionalization basically only one of the possibilities another attempt to identify what are the different stages of social movement has been made by armand l moss uh, where uh, he basically uh, stress the importance of focusing on the continual interaction between movement government and the larger social uh, environment that how these three different components interact with uh, one another now based on his research uh, armand uh, elmos has identified that every social movement passes through five different uh, stages and he calls these stages as uh, incipiency coalescence institutionalization fragmentation and demise now we'll try to understand what are these five different stages of uh, movement identified by moss so the first stage is of that incipiency now incipiency simply means uh, the beginning the beginning of uh, something so in this uh, stage of incipiency large number of people become frustrated uh, about a specific uh, social problem 
so uh, the people may be frustrated or people may be facing different kind of problem because of some uh, uh, problem which is of civic nature or problem which is maybe of environmental concern in this stage of uh, incipiency a large section of the people uh, are frustrated and they are basically facing some kind of uh, problem not only that they are facing some kind of problem but uh, they don't find any kind of a solution through the established or through the already available existing uh, institutions so the available social system social institutions are not in a position to solve the specific problems which are faced by the a certain section of the uh, society now in this stage of incipiency uh in this stage leaders are more likely to emerge uh and they offer com competing solutions to the perceived societal problem so it is possible that different people emerge in this stage and everyone will try to claim that uh, i am the true represent i am the true uh, 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 representation or i represent the social movement and people should people must follow uh, me in 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 achieving their specific goals or objectives so uh, this is the first stage of uh, social movement second is the stage of uh, coalescence now coalescence is the process of coming or growing together uh, into some kind of a mass into some kind of a, a system so in coalescence what happens that movement becomes more organized and develops resource gathering capabilities so compared to the stage of uh, incipiency uh, where where there is hardly any kind of organization or a kind of sense of uh, collectivity in the stage of uh, coalescence different individuals have come together and they have become more organized and uh, they they try to gather whatever whatever the sources available around them in order in terms of manpower in terms of financial contribution uh, in terms of uh, other kinds of resources they try to gather those resources in order to continue their social movement or into Uh, in order to continue their resistance uh, in in the stage of coalescence also uh, groups start developing around the leaders and who basically try to promote the specific policies and they also try to develop uh, the specific uh, strategy and try to promulgate the specific programs which can be followed by the uh, movement um, in achieving their goal now in this stage uh, some kind of uh, competition is also likely to happen and the dominant group out of all these different groups uh, basically or coalition of groups emerge and takes the position of leadership so it is also a stage where some kind of competition is likely to happen between the competing individuals or competing groups that who is the true represent who is the true representative of uh, the social movement or the group associated with movement but ultimately some uh, individual or some group or coalition of groups will emerge which will take the uh, position of uh, leadership and which will which further on will decide the further the course of action or the direct which will give the the direction to the movement in this stage uh, the you know, that dominant group or the dominant leader basically command wide participation and its policies gain influence now once that dominant group or dominant leader has established his reputation that uh, basically that i am the true i am representing the social movement they are being accepted or that group or leader is being accepted by the wider society wider population and uh, the specific policies or the specific goals which they which they identify to be achieved by the movement becomes uh, accepted or becomes part of the policy the third stage is of uh, institutionalization now uh, once the movement uh, reach the state of institutionalization they they start talking in terms of pragmatic terms and they try to work within the established political power uh, structure so uh, in in the stage of institutionalization movements basically reach the peak of their strength and influence and become formally established now they have uh, acquired some kind of uh, institutional structure some kind of organizational structure and now they are no more some kind of um, unorganized uh, Uh, structure so then now they have become formally established well established so uh, in this stage of institutionalization uh, the movement and the organization associated with becomes more formal rational organization and becomes part of the normal pattern of uh, life so uh, roles and responsibilities are very clearly defined uh, basically a division of labor takes place in which uh, what role should be performed by which section of the organization or who will perform what kind of role that becomes very clear to the movement participants now it must be kept in mind that 
it is not always necessary that every movement becomes institutionalized or every movement ultimately uh, reach the stage uh, the third stage of institutionalization so some movements may fail and disappear without reaching this uh, stage so without uh, reaching the state of institutionalization some movements are likely to fail and likely to disappear before they achieve the stage of institutionalization after the stage of institu institutionalization after the stage of institutionalization comes a stage of fragmentation now fragmentation uh, is basically the process uh, of breaking or being broken into different fragments so here organizational structure no longer seems to be necessary and because the changes they sought to bring about have been institutionalized so fragmentation usually comes after a period of some success when the movement has already achieved some kind of success but now they are basically breaking apart falling apart so movement uh, gradually starts uh, breaking apart now organization structures do not uh, do not seems to be uh, necessary and uh, disputes may further arise over ideology and may drive uh, some of the people some of the movement participants who are not happy with the with the strategy or with the direction in which the movement is uh, going on so basically dissidents uh, may drive away or dissidents may not be happy with the direction in which the movement is going on so it is a, it is basically a stage in which there is more chances of breaking up of movement organization the last stage is of the stage of demise now demise is basically uh, something uh, which has come to its end so uh, demise represents end or death for example uh, the, the demise of reform movement so demise simply uh, refers to the last stage of a social movement now the demise the movement has come to an end it may have different meaning uh, demise may represent uh, different things for example uh, when the movement uh, have achieved its uh, goal and therefore no further need to continue or it might lose popular support provided by the participants or it might be repressed by the state or the target group by using different means so demise refers to both positive and negative outcome of social movement so uh, organizations and institutions created by the movement might survive and are no longer set apart from the mainstream of society so in this stage the organization which is spearheading the movement may become part of the mainstream society where it is becomes difficult to differentiate the movement organization with the mainstream uh, institutions or from the social structure and also in this stage uh, the goals of the movement or uh, the goals of the organization associated with the movement may be adopted as a part of official policy so for the uh, the movement is um, the movement automatically will come to an end when their goals has been accepted as a part of the uh, uh, official policy or when it has become institutionalized based on the contribution made by bloomer and moss and many other scholars uh, an attempt an attempt has been made to identify the most uh, possible stages through which every social movement is likely to pass and uh, they have been they have identified it as the stages of emergence coalescence bureaucratization and decline so these are basically the four most common uh, stages uh, through which every movement is more likely to pass uh, step by in their in their life cycle so first stage is that of stage of uh, emergence now that is stage of emergence can be compared to the bloomers stage of social ferment now in this stage of emergence movement is in, in preliminary stage with little to no organization so in this stage of emergence there is hardly any kind of uh, organizational property the movement has not achieved any kind of uh, organizational structure it is still the beginning the movement or the cause of the movement has just started to be uh, appearing so it may be because of some kind of social unrest or some kind of uh, specific problem which is which is being faced by certain section of the society so it is a stage of why so this stage is of widespread uh, discontent where people are not happy with something uh, which is going on in society so uh, potential participants are unhappy with social condition but they don't take any kind of uh, action they are simply unhappy but they are not aware what to do they they are clueless that what kind of uh, action what kind of strategy need to be taken in order to uh, 
in order to address that uh, specific problem. So uh, in the stage of emergence, members basically serve as agitators and they try to raise consciousness around the specific issue. So in this stage of emergence, the initial participant or the agitators basically, they try to create some kind of awareness, some kind of consciousness among the people related to a specific problem or specific issues. Next stage is that of coalescence, which is basically a popular stage. Now this stage is characterized by a more clearly defined sense of discontent. Now in this stage, uh, people have identified that what is the cause of the problem and who is basically responsible for that problem. So in, in this stage, uh, what was basically uncoordinated discontent in the stage of emergence have become more collective and focused. People have now clearly identified the root cause of the problem and they have also identified who is specifically responsible for that uh, specific for that problem. Now in this stage of coalescence also leadership emerges and some kind of strategies are devised, some kind of strategies are worked out in order to achieve the specific goals of that movement. So in this stage mass demonstrations may occur which is basically a means to display uh, the actual power of the movement. So mass rallies may be organized to remind the state or the target uh, group that what power they are carrying or how much support they are having of the common uh, people. The stage of bureaucratization, which can be compared with Bloomer's stage of formalization. Now in this stage of bureaucratization, higher level of organization coalition based strategies take place. So uh, people become more coordinated, they become more organized, strategies are well defined and some kind of uh, coalition is also likely to develop uh, and in this stage. Now here, the movement is uh, not only limited to mass rallies, which was the case uh, in the stage of uh, So trained staff may be needed to carry out the functions of the organization. So uh, in this stage, political power also increases and political elites are more accessible. So the political power of the movement further increases and the political elites are become more easily accessible to the uh, members of the movement or the people associated with the, that particular movement. Now in this stage, paid, paid staff is needed in the absence of enthusiastic volunteers. So when people are not freely available or enthusiastic volunteers are not available to participate and to carry on the activities of the movement, paid staff may be needed to fill that gap. The last stage is the stage of decline, which is basically the stage of institutionalization. Decline does not mean failure, although it may reflect a negative uh, picture of a movement that the movement has declined it means it has failed but decline is not uh, exactly the failure of the movement. So uh, according to Frederick de Miller the meaning of decline is uh, so according to F. D. Miller decline can have four possible meanings and what are these? He terms them as uh, repression, cooptation, success and failure. So uh, the movement may decline because of number one, repression. So when excessive force is being used by authority, by violent means or by some other, other means to destroy the movement, the movement may be repressed. So the movement may decline because of the use of force by the authority. Now that use of force uh, use of force may be legitimate for the state but they are always considered as illegitimate from the point of view of the movement participants. Some laws may be also passed to basically to disband or to outlaw the specific movement activities or organizations or to basically brand them as some kind of illegal organizations. At the same time movement participants may be projected as dangerous to the social order and to social harmony and they may also be uh, a repression represents uh, a form of decline where the state or the target group basically uses force of different kind in order to repress the movement. Cooptation is a second form of decline in which the movement leaders become associated with the authorities or the movement target. So instead of uh, challenging uh, the authorities or the movement targets, uh, in the in the face of cooptation, the movement leaders prefer to be associated or prefer to be identified with the authorities or the target against which they were leading the movement. Now, the the third form by which movement can decline is because of success. So, if some movement has achieved its goal, achieved 
its objective there is no further need to continue the movement so the movement may decline because they are successful and the last meaning of decline is that it represents a failure so organizational or strategic failings is very common reason for failure so the movement uh, without so the movement without achieving its goal has failed because of different reasons because of different organizational disputes or because of uh, emergence of some kind of factions within the factionalism is one of the basic reason for the failure of the movements where different factions different groups may emerge within the movement which may claim that they are true they are the true representation of the movement organization so these are the four different forms of decline uh, identified by frederick de miller also it must be kept in mind that decline is not only negative in sense it may also mean that the movement has become successful and they have achieved their uh, goal so there is no need so there is no further need to carry to carry on the movement now given here some of the references uh, which you can be which can be further used for more detailed discussion for more detailed understanding of the different stages of social movement guys as i said in the beginning that identification of the different stages of social movement is difficult because it is difficult to classify the movement itself because they are highly diverse in nature so some movements may be uh, of shorter duration some movement may be long lasting some movements may be based on peaceful strategies where some movement may be uh, using highly violent mechanisms to achieve their goal so since classification is difficult because of their diverse because of the diverse nature of the movement itself it becomes difficult to uh, identify the different stages of social movement but in spite of that uh, problem of uh, classification of movements and identification of different stages attempt has been made by uh, herbert bloomer as well as uh, moss to identify the different stages of uh, social movement so according to bloomer uh, there are four different stages through which every social movement passes they are the stage of social ferment popular excitement formalization and uh, institutionalization where according to moss every social movement passes through five different stages and these are the stages of incipiency coalescence institutionalization fragmentation and uh, demise rumor and moss and many other these stages can be clubbed into four different uh, stages of social movement and these are the stage of emergence stage of coalescence bureaucratization and decline now decline doesn't mean that a movement has failed or it, it does not always represents failure so decline may also means success as well as failure along with repression as well as cooptation so there are four different meanings of decline these are repression cooptation success and failure thank you very much